This segment brought to you by Bravo Company USA. Hey, welcome to the Vickers Tactical Channel. This is Larry Goes to the Movies. This is something that we're doing in response to the feedback we got from viewers on how much they liked the shot for shot on the collateral video scene that we did. I'm gonna take a look at the heat shootout scene and kind of go through some pointers and give you some feedback on some of the things that I think they did right and wrong on one of the most famous Hollywood gun scenes in history, all right? First off, Heat was made in 1995 by Michael Mann. It's certainly one of the most legendary movies in the firearms industry. It had two British SAS former operators train the actors, and they put a lot of time in on the range, and you can tell when you watch the movie in the gun handling. That being said, I'm gonna take you kind of through it, pause the scenes as I need be, talk to you about some of the stuff I see, and we'll kick it off. Okay, we're gonna kick it off now. We're actually skipping the actual bank robbery part and we're picking it up where De Niro and the bank robbers are coming out of the bank. Pacino's coming in, LAP starting to close in on the scene and it's just about game time. So that's where we're gonna pick it up. All right, here we go. All right, De Niro's rolling out. Here's Al Pacino running an FNC, cool gun, but the reality of it is chances of a guy in LAPD running an FNC is pretty slim. Here we go, bad guys are getting in the getaway car. Right off the bat, from a military point of view, we'd want to infill from the front, exfill from the back. Why is that? Real simple, law enforcement are gonna close in on the front of the bank and you're walking right back out the same way you came in. No upside in terms of being able to pull this off. Now, Val Kilmer kicks it off with some full auto fire car 15. All right, now bad guys are fixing to split here. What you're seeing here is mainly fully automatic burst fire from the bad guys, semi-automatic throughout this scene, law enforcement, shotgun, rifle, and pistol. Fully automatic fire looks good in the movies, certainly looks good in this movie, but in the real world, doesn't have a lot of merit. All right, one law enforcement officer's down. Unfortunately, he's wearing body armor that is only good for pistols, took a rifle round. Now things go sideways here and the driver is killed. Robert De Niro kicks it off with some fully automatic fire through the windshield. That's commonly taught in special operations. A lot of people aren't aware of it. They don't think about it, but you can return fire through a windshield. Now tires go out. Al Pacino's out in the street, M16, shotgun in play, law enforcement. Driver just went down, and now they're gonna have to bail out of the getaway car. It slams into the rear of a car, driver's dead. Now, when you see these guys bail out of the getaway car, they're going to start moving forward in support of each other. Thing is, you got to know what your buddy's going to be doing and anticipate his movement. You're not going to be able to hear him. That's one of the reasons we pursued electronic ear pro in special operations. Another thing you see here, not only with the bad guys, but law enforcement, they're using the vehicles for cover. The only real place that's cover on a vehicle is the engine compartment. Pretty much everywhere else, the bullets can go right through. So remember, engine compartment is key. Everywhere else is temporary cover, and then you bail away from the vehicle. The other thing, I want to stop real quick. You see where the SAS guys train the actors. We got bounding overwatch. So you have the two bad guys, De Niro and Val Kilmer, supporting each other and doing a bounding overwatch oper movement up the street from car to car, abandoning their getaway car where the driver's dead and it's out of action. They're going from one vehicle or one piece of cover to the next, covering each other and in support. All right, so let's kick it back off. Here's Kilmer's going up to the next vehicle. Tom Sizemore's still in there. Now, one thing about Tom Sizemore, I want to stop it real quick. You'll see it coming up. Shoot the Galeo ARM heavy gun. That's beside the point, but it's in 223-556. It would be interchangeable ammo-wise with the CAR 15s that De Niro and Val Kilmer are using, but it would not be interchangeable in terms of magazines, which is not really cool. You'd want to have the guys not only be able to use the same ammo, but the same magazines. So it's Cool in a movie, but not necessarily something you'd want to do in the real world. Now on the flip side, Pacino's running around with a FNC. Once I get, once again, non-standard weapon, but it does take M16 magazines. All right, so here we go. Kick it off. Val Kilmer's gonna have the reload coming up right now. 
does it behind cover, comes in, hit the bolt release, and he's back on target. Overall, pretty good. I'm a guy who likes to use my thumb to hit the bolt release, not do this, because I've seen people cup it and miss the bolt release. So I'm kind of a thumb guy uh, when it comes to that. Now these guys obviously spend a lot of time in training doing these reloads to get ready for this scene. As a matter of fact, supposedly they show this scene in basic training in different places for military in the United States to see how to reload under stress behind cover. One little thing about it, I don't really like coming up and smacking it with the palm of my hand. I prefer to come up and hit it with my thumb. Reason being, I've seen many people, they cup their hand and they miss the bolt release and they have to strike at it a couple times. I prefer to come up, bolt release your thumbs within an inch of the bolt release on an AR or CAR-15, hit it and you're back on target. So now one thing on the reload here with the FNC and Al Pacino, all right, Al Pacino takes his hand off the weapon, put it in new mags and then racks it. FNC does not have a bolt hold open device. You're gonna get a click on the last shot. It's a mag out, new mag in, and just like an AK, you gotta rack the, the bolt carrier or the charging handle. You know, I'd prefer to roll it over, rack it, and you're back on target. You never have to take your hand off the pistol grip. All right, so now we're back in the scene. Once again, you have Al Pacino maneuvering as well as other law enforcement officers on De Niro and Val Kilmer. It's alluded to in the movie that these guys knew each other in the military. That's where the tactics and the training for this bounding overwatch came from. Things kind of go sideways for Sizemore here. He's got to break off the group. Problem with that now is he doesn't have anybody covering his back. He kind of goes off on his own uh, angle here to try to get away from the, the, the volume of fire being laid down by law enforcement officers, but he does not now have the support of his teammates. In fact, he's kind of left them hanging out to dry as well. All right, so we're back to it. All right, you got De Niro and you've got Val Kilmer. All right, and now Val Kilmer just gets wounded. He goes down. De Niro is going to come over now and do a fireman's carry to get him out of there. All right, he's going to do the best he can to get him out of there. He's not going to try to leave his buddy out in the street. De Niro's going over, picking up Val Kilmer here in one minute. Got law enforcement officers, unfortunately, taking hits, still behind cover. <clears throat> now, He's assisting him. He doesn't have his whole weight. Val Kilmer does have the ability to stumble along with him. Pacino's chasing him. They're gonna go over to an area now where there's a lot of civilians. They're in a parking lot of a grocery store. You see, here's one of the dilemmas that law enforcement officers face. Perfect example right here. Bad guys don't have to worry about collateral damage hitting civilians, law enforcement officers do. And what you see coming up here De Niro puts down a lot of suppressive fire on the law enforcement officers and Al Pacino, but Al Pacino has to be real careful about choosing his shot to take back because he doesn't want to take the chance of hitting any civilians. That is the dilemma that law enforcement face on a daily basis around this country. At this point, the law enforcement officers have to give commands to the civilians to get them out of the line of fire the way we were taught. Keep it simple. Same commands over and over and over. Civilian, unfortunately, just got hit right there. De Niro just ran out of ammo and they jump in a station wagon by a, a civilian station wagon that already had groceries in it, I believe was the case. Coming up. De Niro reloaded behind cover. Pacino's doing his best to get civilians out of the way. And now they split Ford Taurus station wagon, I believe, a little stay wag action. And they're taking off the hatchbacks wide open, groceries pouring out the back. So that's the end of the scene with Kilmer and De Niro. They split, now Pacino's going after Tom Sizemore who has went elsewhere. Like I said, remember he split off from his two buddies with the Galil ARM. Sizemore is going to do a real scumbag move coming up here real soon and scarf up the little girl as a hostage. That changes everything now when you have a hostage in the, in the picture. All right, here he goes. He grabs up the little girl. 
Al Pacino's character has good situational awareness and is closing in on 12 o'clock on Sizemore and his character is completely unaware of it. Now, this is a pretty dicey shot coming up. However, it's not that far of a way. Remember something about filming. Stuff always looks farther on camera than it really is in the real world. Probably max, this is a 20 yard shot. That being said, it's a pretty dicey shot for somebody to take um, with hostage involved. You have to weigh out the pros and cons. And like I said, law enforcement has to deal with this stuff on a fairly regular basis. This guy, these guys have already shot at cops. They've already shot at civilians. They're already willing to kill people because they've already been doing it. So you have to go, you know, if I don't take this shot, there's a good chance that they are gonna kill this little girl regardless. So the bad guy, Tom Sizemore in this case, is gonna kill the little girl regardless. So I have to take the calculated risk to take the headshot. Now, got a technical point coming up. Notice right there. Al Pacino is not looking through the rear side aperture, he's looking over the rear side aperture. He's, so he's basically putting the front sight post on Tom Sizemore's head and he's looking right over the rear sight aperture and you go, well then he's gonna miss the shot. Depending on how far it is and where he holds, he can still make that shot. It's something, if you go out and try it and practice with your iron sighted AK or AR-15 or FNC, put out an Ipsy target or something or a silhouette target at about 20 yards and come up and look just over the rear sight aperture and squeeze the trigger and see if you can make a head. I think you'll be surprised. As you get farther out, farther away from that distance, it would be much more difficult, but it is actually something that can be done. All right, so Sizemore's closing the gap, which makes this an even more e easier shot for Pacino. He turns around and it's game over. Unfortunately, Pacino flinched, which you would expect for a movie actor who is obviously not a gun guy, but still, nevertheless, it's a shot that could be done, not out of the realm of possibility. And that's basically the end of the scene. Okay, so to wrap this thing up, you can tell some of the guys put a lot of time in on the range. Val Kilmer obviously did, I gotta believe De Niro did. Al Pacino could have spent some more time on the range. Some of his handling of the FNC left a little bit to be desired as reload. The factory came all the way off to rack the bolt. Also flinching in that last shot, that's a, little, that's a little ding on him and ding on the movie. So that's one thing that I would say, he didn't quite live up to the standards of somebody like Val Kilmer or De Niro. Clearly those guys put some serious time in to master the guns, particularly Val Kilmer. Now, another thing from a filmmaking point of view, the, the filmmakers did an excellent job of kind of laying everything out so you knew what was going on and who was going where. At no time did you kind of just loot, where did he come from or what's that all about? You understood, the guys came out of the bank, how everything set up in the street, everything started to go sideways and they were moving forward, bounding overwatch, they're moving in support of a team, so they did a good job. Remember, they don't have a lot to work with. They're basically giving you this to look at, so you have to have a good grasp on what's going on and, and why and where, and the filmmakers overall did an excellent job on that. Okay, last thing, but certainly not least, you can tell they're shooting blanks. Everybody involved is shooting blanks and you can tell it. 5.56 five, weapons like CAR-15s and GLEAL, ARMs don't have much recoil, but they do have a little bit of recoil. FNC has a little bit of recoil. So you can tell if you watch, these guys are shooting blanks with no recoil at all. So kind of a hard thing to compensate for in movies per se, but you can tell they're shooting blanks. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Overall, A minus from the LAV, big thumbs up for the heat shootout scene. One of Hollywood's best. Have a good one, LAV out.